Hi, I'm Perry Knotts, and this is my Canon EOS R3 unboxing video. All right, let's get started here. Here's the box. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I, I mean, anytime you get a new camera, how can you not be excited about this? I mean, uh, a little damage here in the bottom. I ordered this from, it actually came from Amazon. Uh, just, I'm sure, like a handful of people out there that... This has been backordered because of the supply chain issues uh, that the world's been going through. And so I had an order through BNH and local camera stores and it actually came through Amazon the fastest uh, the other day. So here's the box EOS R3. You get a preview of the camera right there, which looks pretty awesome. Uh, the R series logo on top, uh, which I just learned about actually means reimagined. So RF stands for reimagined focus, which is pretty cool. Uh, so let's open this thing up. Enough about me talking. So you open it up and you got your typical stuff inside. Uh, you have your strap. Uh, I don't use these straps anymore. I've gone to these peak design straps, which work amazing. And so these end up just uh, collecting dust or end up going on eBay at some point if someone's interested. Uh, you have your eyepiece. There's your eyepiece. And the first thing I noticed with this eyepiece is it is freaking massive. Uh, I mean, look, you can get two fingers in there. Let me just show you. Here's my Mark II that I use day to day now. And I mean, there's the Mark II eyepiece. There's the R3 eyepiece. I mean, that is gigantic, uh, which will be pretty cool. You can almost fit the whole damn thing in there, uh, which is wild. So put that back. That still blows me away. Uh, you have your typical registration, paperwork, um, your manual, which at some point I'll read through this uh, or download the PDF just to learn more about this camera because there's so many features on these things nowadays that if you don't read through it or get some help, like you're not gonna take full advantage of all the benefits. Uh, just more registration paperwork. All right, but then inside you have just black storage. You open that up, voila, the bubble wrap. So there she is right there. Uh, before we get to that, let's see what else is inside this box. So we open the box up, if I can get this out. And then another piece of cardboard. Put that aside. And then within here, you have one package, two package, a battery, and then another package. And I'll explain all these in just a second move the box to the side now so we can see so in one of the packages bubble wrap here is just uh the battery the lpe19 battery uh, i love these batteries uh they work in the mark ii and so they just get a great extended long lasting i mean they last forever in my opinion so i'm thankful that canon stuck with this battery so that uh, people like me and others that have the Mark II and other Pro Series bodies that you don't have to replace them, thank goodness. Um, here is an extension cord, or I really should say power cord. Let's throw that plastic away. But this is the power cord for the battery charger. And so here's the battery charger. Uh, some people may hate these battery chargers. I personally love them. Uh, yes, it is a little big. Yes, it's a little clunky, but to be able to throw two batteries on here and charge them at the same time is huge. Uh, so you have your two bays there, uh, which is really helpful in my opinion. So, and then your cord for that. And then this just looks to be the uh, USB extension that will connect to the camera. So I typically don't use these either. Um, I put them on use uh, card readers, I should say, to download my memory cards. So here we go, here's the camera, removing the bubble wrap, first layer bubble wrap. Here's the second layer of bubble wrap coming undone. And there it is, uh, which is pretty cool. I mean, the first thing I notice is just looking at this, 
especially compared to the Mark II. I'm like, oh my gosh, this thing is so freaking small, which is huge in my opinion. Uh, this thing is a solid tank. I mean, it's heavy, which is awesome, I guess, in some ways that it's rugged, uh, but it's nice to see that the format is getting a little smaller. Uh, the other thing I noticed is just where the sensor is on this camera. Uh, you can see the mark on the top of the viewfinder there. So the sensor is so close compared to the sensor on the Mark II. Look how far away that is, uh, which is pretty crazy. So, but then also just picking this up, it is so light. It is crazy how light this is. And granted, I don't have a battery in there right this second, but it is so light. Uh, but it still has that same grip and feel of the Mark II, which is really helpful. Uh, I've been using these cameras, the Mark IIs, for a while. And to have that same feel, uh, it's a little different, but not much. Uh, and you still feel like it has a good grasp in your hand that you're not going to drop this thing. So before we do anything else, let's put a battery in there. We'll take off the battery cover, put that to the side, uh, remove the little dust jacket, dust cover. At some point, I never use these things either. There's always a battery in these cameras so much that that just um, ends up getting lost. But there we go, battery in here, and really not much difference on weight. Yes, it made it a little heavier adding the battery, but even compared to the Mark II, which is right here, I mean, this thing feels like it weighs half the weight, which is amazing. I do a lot of work for uh, football, so I travel a lot using Think Tank bags. Uh, so it's nice to start reducing weight in my camera bag, uh, which will be amazing for my back. So there's the view, or not the viewfinder, the eyepiece. Uh, we'll go ahead and put that on the back real quick. And then just looking at that real quick, it's like, that's the other observation I have with this camera is the viewfinder sticks out so far from the back of the camera versus the Mark II. Um, I mean, I'm not sure if you can see that from the video, but just look at that difference. So that's going to take some getting used to. What this reminds me of is when you put on an eyepiece when it's pouring down the rain, um, and you put on your think tank cover and put on another extra eyepiece. I mean, that's what that reminds me of. It's going to take some getting used to, but at least it has a nice foam, uh, rubbery grip on the outside. So it shouldn't be too hard on your eye, uh, which is good. Here's the back, which is clearly completely different than the Mark II I'm using now. It has this LCD flip screen, which I don't know if, I mean, this I think I'm gonna get used to and love a lot. Uh, it's nice that it can fold in and out and that you can use it. So we'll turn it on real quick and there you can see uh, part of the menu there. So that's, I guess, what you would see through the viewfinder. So, a lot more buttons for sure between the R3 and you can see here too even the dial is smaller versus the dial on the Mark II N. Not the Mark II N, geez that's an old camera. The Mark II. I don't know why I'm thinking of the Mark II N. That camera so dated. That's beside the point. But here we go. Let's talk about more of the features back here and probably some subtle differences from the, not subtle, major differences between the Mark II. Uh, just the button format, you have your playback button, your zoom button, your delete button, uh, your set button. I use the set button a lot at football games. Uh, this is what we use to transfer pictures. We use the ethernet port built into the side. Uh, we take full advantage of that port. Uh, you can actually see, this is our little pack that we use at games to transmit pictures. Uh, quickly so you all can enjoy them on Instagram and other platforms. So uh, just some of the back button features I should say. That knob's new. I'll have to look at what that does and all the full functionality of it. This uh, back button focus I use a lot. Like that has a different feel to it so I'm sure there's other features and capabilities with that. Uh, you can turn it to still or video mode. So I'm primarily 90% still photographer, so I don't really use much video at all. Uh, I'm sure I'll start dabbling in it in some regard, but uh, I can't talk to about the video features on these at all. So 
Uh, what's the other great thing about this is it's 30 frames a second, which I guess could be good or bad. Uh, and with the electric shutter, and it's 12 frames a second with the mechanical shutter. And so what's cool about this being mirrorless is just the silent, quiet shutter that this will have. Uh, going to events and different functions where you have the Mark II and it can just become noisy hearing the shutter go up and down. And so it'll be amazing to be able to go to an event and just take a picture and not have anyone know that you just took a photograph of them and uh, or bother them. So let's just talk about some of the um, other features here on the side of the camera. This just looks like all your typical ports that you have. Uh, this one right here, first and foremost, is just for the camera. It's a little slot. And then you work your way, let's start from the top, I guess. And you have your USB port and HDMI out port. You have your ethernet port. All of these are nice and tightly sealed. And then you have your uh, flash adapter. So if your PC sync cord needs to go there, it can go in there. Uh, here's your headphone jack and a mic input, I believe, uh, jack. Again, I'm not sure about all the video functionality of it. Uh, if you have an N3 adapter or cord or anything like that, that would go here in the front. Uh, here's the button to release the lens. If there was a lens on it, let's just take the lens cap off and there's the inside of it. So you can see it. I don't have a card in the camera right this second. So there's your shutter button, your dial. I use this dial for my shutter speed. I mean, you can change this dial. It'd be aperture and other functions, but for me, that's what I use for shutter. I use this back dial for my aperture to adjust aperture. So that's what I do. And then I use back button focus a lot. So I'll use this button right here to back button focus for uh, the camera. So and I guess other than that, like here's where the memory card slots go. Oh, geez, there's a card already in here. That's awesome. 128 gigabyte card. I don't know if that was accidental or intentional, but that thing's probably a couple hundred bucks right there. So that's pretty cool. Two, two slots. Uh, I'm not sure I'm a fan of the C Fast Express and the SD slot. I would probably prefer just to have one memory card so you don't have to buy two different ones. That was one nice thing about the Mark II is it was just two uh, CF cards that you could have. Or actually, I take that back. What am I thinking about? That's CFast Express, and then you had a different uh, compact flash card. So that's silly. It's, I don't know why these camera manufacturers keep doing that. I wish they would just stick with one card uh, so you wouldn't have to get two different formats. So other than that, I mean, this thing's pretty crazy. I mean, I clearly haven't taken any pictures yet connected anything, uh, any lenses, I should say. I do have the EF to RF mount that arrived the other day as well. We'll have to open that up soon uh, and test that out so I can get this 400 millimeter on there. And we'll take it to a game here in a couple weeks and see how it works. So I'm pretty excited. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you liked it, feel free to subscribe below. Um, and thanks again.